Hello, and welcome to the Trojan Entertainment Network's first virtual town hall forum with our guest, Congressman Adam Schiff. I'm TEN's founder, Jimmy Kelly. For a decade and counting, TEN has been providing live networking events, panels featuring industry leaders, and other career resources for USC alumni working in entertainment. We're 100% volunteer run by our members, and many of us, myself included as a screenwriter, are self-employed. The COVID-19 pandemic has especially hurt those in the entertainment community who have seen the loss of jobs and income due to the shuttering of productions and live events. That's had us thinking a lot about the new stimulus bill passed in response to the economic impact of COVID-19, including its unprecedented provisions to support self-employed professionals. These provisions were championed in large part by Congressman Adam Schiff. Congressman, thank you for joining us. Jim, it's great to be with you. I appreciate uh, your putting together this conference uh, and know a great many people within your network. In fact, uh, my brother, David McMillan, uh, works in the industry as a proud graduate of SC Film School. Uh, so I've been very much looking forward to having this chance to talk to your members. That's fantastic, fight on to him. So to get started, can you give us some insight into under normal circumstances, what the relationship is between a congressman representing a district like yours and the entertainment industry, both in terms of companies and the individual constituents who represent this industry? Well, I probably have more people in the industry as my constituents than any other member of Congress. Uh, it's a great source of pride for me. Uh, this has been true uh, since I was uh, in the state Senate many years ago. Uh, and of course, uh, what it does is it makes you attuned to the issues that are particularly important to the industry. And over the years, they've been everything from runaway production to intellectual property theft. Uh, I've been in uh, legislative office long enough to remember the pre-file sharing days uh, when uh, IP was a much lesser concern, still a concern, but more a concern for studio executives uh, than it was for uh, everyone in the industry. But as people started to lose their livelihood uh, through intellectual property theft, uh, through a runaway production, it became, those became very uh, prominent issues. Uh, and frankly, I have the same challenge uh, in representing my constituents on those issues that I have found uh, with uh, representing my constituents today uh, that are working uh, in the freelance uh, area or as contract workers or in the gig uh, component of the industry. Because the perception uh, in Sacramento when I was a state legislator, the perception in Washington as a member of Congress is that those entertainment industry problems um, are, are, you know, problems for celebrities. Uh, and we don't need to really be concerned with them. Uh, they're all very wealthy. They're doing just fine. They don't need the government to be concerned about anything that, that impacts them. Uh, and of course, it's been a, a constant process of education um, to inform legislators that no, actually, most of the people that work in the industry are working day to day, week to week, just trying to get by and make a living, um, many of which you've never heard their names, uh, but they're responsible for that creative work product that you love so much and people around the world enjoy. Uh, and frankly, people right now are uh, living off of uh, as they uh, stream uh, content uh, to occupy uh, their time at home. But uh, we have worked together um, with the industry, with people like yourself, uh, to help the, those in the industry advocate for themselves, uh, be part of that member education. Uh, and that involves uh, visits to Washington, visits to our district office. It involves town hall meetings with different organizations within the industry. Most of them have been live. Uh, this is one of my first virtual ones uh, with the industry. Um, but uh, that communication is really important. And obviously it's important that it take place uh, outside of the Los Angeles members, uh, anywhere the industry can be found. Um, and I know we'll talk about that uh, in a bit, but uh, to have the success that we ended up having in the last relief bill, uh, it was necessary to reach out to other members and other parts of the country that also have a vibrant entertainment, entertainment industry segment uh, to make sure that they would, uh, people in the industry that needed help would get the help in that bill. Well, let's get right into what people have tuned in for, and that's to learn about this bill. Can you provide an overview on the work you've been doing and how this bill will impact the entertainment industry? 
I'd be happy to. And let me start out by giving you uh, a couple resources. Uh, I'll start out with my own website. Uh, if there are questions that your members have that we don't get to today, uh, or they want to look for more information or follow up on things that we discussed, uh, it's at shift.house.gov. Uh, the SBA is also a critical uh, website uh, for those that uh, are in small businesses uh, in the industry. Uh, and of course, the Employment Development Department of the California State Government is another critical website for those that will need to apply for unemployment compensation. But in terms of the, the response, um, we have in very quick succession now taken up three major bills in Congress. It's been obviously a challenge because of uh, the, the requirement that we also social distance um, the first two bills uh, were to push out testing uh, to make sure the resources were there for hospitals and clinics and healthcare workers uh, to ramp up uh, all the needed supplies to press the administration on uh, implementing the Defense Production Act to, to beef up production of ventilators. Uh, obviously, a lot of problems there, which we can talk about later in the call if you like. But the final bill, the third bill, was really designed to not only address remaining challenges to the healthcare system, uh, and many of the hospitals are going to be besieged if they're not already, um, but also to provide an economic lifeline to uh, really hundreds of millions of people in the country uh, who are facing dire economic straits now that we're all told we can't leave the house. Um, and so, the predominant issue for the industry, at least one of the most significant, is because of the unique nature of the work in the industry where people may not have a, an employer day in, day out, week after week, but may go from contract to contract, show to show, commercial to commercial, uh, job to job, um, they, they may have been completely left out of unemployment compensation. And so our priority was to expand unemployment compensation to cover those that work in non-traditional uh, employment like in the industry. Now obviously it's not confined to the entertainment industry and people in the gig economy have many of the same issues, but we worked on provisions that would allow people in the industry to apply for unemployment compensation. And one of the things the bill did was it provided an enhanced unemployment benefit. So in the state of California, you might get up to $400 a week in unemployment compensation. The federal government added an additional 600 a week. So probably the maximum you could get would be about 1,000 a week. Um, and those benefits are now available uh, to uh, people in the industry when they might not have been otherwise. Now, there still be issues of calculation of those benefits. Uh, and there were some things that we wanted in the bill that we weren't completely successful in. Those benefits will largely be calculated on the basis of your income last year. Uh, we tried to make um, provision that if you had a contract that got canceled, you could use the amount you were going to earn in the, in the forthcoming contract. We were only partially successful in that. If you have a work that got canceled, that is a, a characteristic to qualify you to get unemployment compensation, even if that's not used for the determination of the amount of that compensation. Uh, ultimately, there are still unanswered questions in terms of calculation of benefits. Uh, you'll have to um, uh, handle those on, as you imagine, an individualized basis with the Employment Development Department of the State of California. But by and large, we were very successful in covering, I think, the vast majority of people that have this non-traditional work in the industry. Uh, and we can talk more about that uh, as well. Okay, great. And uh, another big part of the package is small business loans. Um, you touched on this briefly. So many entertainment companies, when we say small business, we mean literally one or two employees. And when you run a company that small, you are, you know, you're more financially at risk during hard times. So I want to look in turn at things like uh, loan forgiveness from these small business loans. What if you are one of those very small companies that's barely getting by and you're going to have a tough time digging out of this? Um, this is a very important uh, piece of the relief legislation. There, there are several uh, parts of this. There's the unemployment compensation part, which we've been talking about. There's the cash assistance, the, the direct cash payments that will go out. 
um, of $1,600, I'm sorry, $1,200 or $600 uh, for children. Um, those will go to people regardless of the nature of their work. Um, and those are uh, go out on the basis of um, being capped if you earn over, if you're a couple, if you earn over 198,000, um, or if you're uh, an individual half, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I got that wrong, I've got the limits wrong. Um, but uh, I think they, they phase out uh, at 198,000 for a couple and a half that amount for an individual. The full amount uh, I think um, you would get if you earn 75,000 as an individual or less or 150,000 uh, as a couple or less. But um, the third category are for small businesses. And here you have the small business owners and you have those on the payroll of the small business. And we put about 377 billion to try to help people in these categories. Um, and there are three different uh, programs, at least three through the SBA. The largest is the Payroll Protection Program, PPP. Uh, and essentially that allows small businesses to keep their employees on the payroll uh, and apply for loans that are forgivable if they keep people on their payroll. Uh, and so um, frankly, this is in part what I was urging in a much bigger scale. And that is in addition to advocating uh, for the industry and its workers and the fashion we talked about, I was advocating that we follow the model that Britain and some of the um, Nordic countries are using, which is have the, the government guarantee payroll. Um, it, it could be done quite uniformly. It wouldn't matter what kind of business you were in, um, but uh, it would be much less disruptive if people don't lose their job. And then after we're over the worst of the virus, have to look for a job, have to su suffer the indignity of losing their job, um, we did this in a significant piece for small business. Uh, and so uh, if you're a small business person, you should reach out to the SBA, um, and I would do so immediately to begin your application, uh, and you can qualify for assistance to continue making payroll to your employees. Uh, those funds can also be used for payment of rent and payment of utilities. Um, there's another program through SBA for a disaster relief loan. That loan is also forgivable. You can get an advance on that loan. And even if you don't qualify for the loan, you don't have to repay the advance. Um, there's also tax credits you can get for payroll. So there are at least three big programs uh, through the SBA that will provide assistance for people in the category that you're talking about. There are also um, experts uh, through SBA that receive funding to help advise you that you can call these experts that the SBA can link you with and they can tell you, you can tell them about your business and they can say, okay, this is what I would recommend to you. I would apply first for the disaster relief and then I would apply for this. Um, they can help prescribe the best form of relief for you. Um, and so uh, that's a, a vital resource for all small businesses. Yeah, let's switch from businesses to individuals because a key part of this bill and what has inspired a lot of interest among artists and other freelancers is that it proposes to extend unemployment benefits to uniquely classified workers who up until now have not qualified for unemployment. Why is this important and why is it taken until now to address this issue? Uh, it's a very good question, and it's important because there are so many millions of Americans, uh, many of whom do work in the industry, but many work in other industries as well, who don't have traditional employment. And they make a good living, uh, or they at least get by, but, uh, but they don't work for the same firm uh, every week of the year, year after year after year. And normally they would not be covered by unemployment compensation. Uh, now they will be. And so this was very important. One of the things that this crisis is revealing um, it are holes in the system. Uh, you know, in a normal circumstance, if you are one of these freelance workers and your work dries up, your contract goes away, your pilot gets canceled, you don't get unemployment. Um, and not like your neighbor who works for a, a traditional employer. Now we, in this emergency legislation, We've dealt with that so that you will be covered. Um, but 
you should be covered whether it's an emergency like this or not. And so this reveals, I think, one of the holes in the system. Uh, now we also have to figure out, you know, how people pay into the system if they're not paying in through their employer or their employer's not paying in. So we're gonna need to figure that out too. But it does reveal uh, a big hole in the unemployment compensation system. We're also seeing, obviously, uh, holes we knew about already in the healthcare system. Uh, so yes, we're paying for testing but we're not completely paying for treatment. So you get tested, um, your test is paid for. Um, you get, uh, you test positive, uh, or maybe you test negative, but you're still really sick and you need medical care uh, if you don't have uh, healthcare through an exchange and you don't have it through your employer, uh, then you've got a real problem on your hands and this is the problem with not having universal healthcare. Um, so we are seeing, of course, the holes in our system for all their um, graphic uh, nature in this crisis. But in this emergency legislation, we have been at least able to fill the hole when it comes to unemployment compensation. Uh, so you should uh, be covered. Um, there may be narrow circumstances where people are not covered, and it's important to let us know about that, those of us in elective office because this won't be the last package. This is the third, it won't be the last. The speaker's already talking about things that we're gonna need to take care of in the fourth package. We're gonna obviously run into things that were not anticipated. And so uh, your feedback is gonna be really important. Well, you just answered uh, one of my big questions, which is will there, uh, will there be more legislation on this issue? So it's great to hear that that work has already begun. Um, yes, and, and you know, it will take a number of different forms. Um, the states are going to need more help than we were able to provide in the last package. Uh, I think we're going to need to do an awful lot more for the homeless. So we did include mm -hmm. billions for the homeless uh, and the unique health challenges facing the homeless population in this COVID crisis uh, because they can't shelter in place or they can't shelter in, in what we think of as a traditional home. Uh, and uh, we are trying to help, uh, and the state and the city are working on finding hotels and motels and using convention centers and other facilities for shelter, but we're also dealing with staffing shortages of people that can check in uh, on uh, the homeless population if they're moved, for example, to a motel room somewhere. So uh, I think there's going to be a lot more resources necessary for the homeless. Uh, there's going to be, uh, I know, a, a great need uh, remaining within the healthcare system. Uh, we may learn of others that uh, are not covered by um, the economic relief that we provided. Uh, you know, we are already hearing about the gap uh, in that 17 and 18 year olds are not covered by these cash payments. Uh, and many of those in college are going to face enormous difficulties now that their college and where they plan to live in college is no longer available. Um, we also are looking in the next package to provide a stimulus to the economy, uh, perhaps in the form of an infrastructure bill. Uh, I can tell you, uh, and this is a phrase that I almost never hear myself saying, uh, I was pleased to see in a presidential tweet uh, that the president uh, is supportive of an infrastructure bill. Uh, this puts him uh, at odds with some of the Republican leadership in the Congress, but when we do get to the other side of this curve, um, investing in our decaying uh, infrastructure is a great way to get the economy moving again. Well, I want to I want to circle back uh, before we get into the town hall portion to a couple more quick questions about the unemployment benefits. Uh, you mentioned there could be potential gaps in qualifications, uh, so I wanted to ask about one specific. Uh, concern that affects a lot of our members, uh, a lot of independent artists. Unemployment payments are typically calculated when someone is laid off from their job, yet a big part of the entertainment community might be suffering from potential loss of income for jobs that weren't contractually guaranteed yet on projects that have yet to be financed. Independent film professionals are particularly vulnerable to this predicament. How will calculations for unemployment payments be done to figure out what they can receive? Uh, now, I believe the answer is this, uh, but you'll have to, uh, because it's so individual case specific, obviously. I know a lot of this is still being worked out, of course. Yes, and, and you know, part of this will be determined by the State Unemployment Office, the EDD. But uh, my understanding is that um, you will still be covered. Let's say that you, were, uh, you had a contract 
uh, and the contract went away because of the COVID uh, crisis. Uh, or you had uh, a pilot and the pilot went away because of the COVID crisis. Um, you will still be eligible for the unemployment compensation. That compensation, the amount of that compensation is likely to be calculated on the basis of your income uh, the previous year. Um, but you will be eligible as if you lost your job as long as you lost that work because of the COVID crisis. Uh, and I have to think, um, and I would I want to hear if it's otherwise, that the uh, Employment Development Office in the state is going to liberally apply the eligibility criteria um, so that uh, more people are covered uh, and err on the side of covering people. And so, um, but if we find that uh, that's not the case, um, then we can weigh in with the state to try to change it necessary, we can address it legislatively. To give you one example, the Treasury Department, notwithstanding the specific language in that third relief package, uh, was not going to send these cash uh, stimulus checks to individuals who did not file tax returns uh, last year or this year. Well, a lot of people on Social Security uh, or who have a, a low income um, may not file tax returns or may not need to file tax returns and they weren't supposed to have to file a return to get this cash payment. Um, well, uh, we weighed in with the Treasury Department and said, you know, this is, uh, you're placing an intolerable, bur intolerable burden on some of the lowest income people, a lot of them seniors, uh, and they reversed course. Uh, so that was a situation where they had discretion, they exercised it poorly, and now they have exercised it uh, in a better fashion. If we find that the state employment office is exercising their discretion in a way that is at odds with what uh, the Congress intended in this bill, then we can weigh in with them as well. Okay, great. And uh, our town hall panel is getting ready right now, uh, as they do. How does someone who qualifies for aid, uh, be it unemployment benefits, uh, small business loans, how do they sign up? Um, they would uh, they would go online, uh, and because these offices are not encouraging walk-ins, as you can imagine, um, almost all of this should be done online. Uh, you'll go to the SBA website. You'll go to the EDD, uh, California website. Uh, if you come to my website, shift.house.gov, you'll find links for these other offices. But uh, those are the two primary portals in terms of small business relief will be almost all run through the SBA. Unemployment compensation will be run entirely through uh, each state's uh, unemployment office in California. That's the EDD. Great. So Congressman Schiff, it's time now to bring in questions from TENS members as presented by some of our volunteer alumni leaders. I'll hand it off to the current president of the Trojan Entertainment Network, Jason Lubin. Thanks, Jimmy. Uh, and Adam, on behalf of 10, uh, I also want to thank you for uh, participating in the town hall today. Uh, I'm a small business owner. I own my own lit management company, and I know a lot of the issues facing the industry. Uh, my question is from Cassie. She's a director editor who owns her own small production company. Well, there have been a lot of commitments by companies to pay their cast and crew an extension of unemployment. How will this be carried out for lost work for those who work job to job, such as in commercials, as opposed to on a specific show or film? Um, what you'll do, Cassie, is you'll apply for unemployment through the EDD, through the state uh, unemployment office. Um, and as we've been discussing, uh, your, I think your benefit calculation will depend on what your income was for the previous year. Uh, so you should be covered, notwithstanding that, that your commercial work or other work uh, may have gone away, um, and you may need to demonstrate that that work went away in part because of the COVID crisis. Um, and if some of it went away, but others of it didn't go away, I think you still qualify. You may qualify for a lesser benefit, but you can get unemployment compensation, as I understand it, for part of your lost work. Um, in terms of what that benefit will look like, uh, I think that you'll qualify for the $600 federal enhancement uh, benefit, uh, that's $600 per week. Uh, in terms of how much of the state benefit you'll qualify for, uh, it would be, I think, uh, anywhere from uh, the minimum of, of $125 to the maximum of $400 a week. 
Um, it may be somewhere in between, depending on your particular work situation. Um, but that's my understanding. Um, the EDD will have a better, um, uh, in the uh, granular detail answer for you, but that's my understanding. But all of that you would apply for through the EDD. Thank you. Our next question will be presented by Yelena Podkolzina. Congressman, um, thanks again for taking the time to speak with us today. I'm the director of events for 10 and I'm a freelance artist and actor myself. This question is from Brian, a casting assistant. One of the major issues facing many young people, especially those in entertainment, is their ability to pay rent. There has been relief given to homeowners for mortgage payments, but there has not been the same given for renters. Is this an issue being discussed and is there a plan to handle? Um, Brian, yes, uh, absolutely. This is being discussed and we did provide some relief in the federal legislation. Uh, the hook that we used were um, uh, federally backed mortgages. So if, for example, the person that is renting the property to you, your landlord, um, has a mortgage on that property that is federally insured, and if they have the mortgage, most of them are federally insured, um, then they're not permitted to evict you, they're not permitted to uh, penalize you for um, non-payment of rent on time. So there are provisions in the federal legislation to protect you until you're able to make those rent payments. Uh, and, um, and furthermore, the state and the cities are also taking action. So depending on where you live, in Burbank, for example, I think there is a moratorium on evictions. Uh, I think uh, Governor Newsom has also placed a different moratorium on evictions. Uh, and so there are protections in place. Uh, it is our hope, obviously, that uh, if, for example, you're a small business owner or you work for a small business, um, or you receive uh, unemployment compensation that you're able to pay um, uh, for food and rent and basic necessities. Uh, but if you're not able to, then uh, there is protection in the, in the form of these moratoriums on eviction. Um, I would also say this because it will take some time for those cash payments to re reach you, the, the cash stimulus checks of uh, 1200 um, it will take time to apply for unemployment compensation. You're probably getting your rent bill now, uh, first of the month, um, that you should reach out to your landlord. Uh, and if you're a homeowner and have a mortgage and can't make your mortgage payment, reach out to your bank. Um, and similarly, your utility, if it's utility bill, uh, many banks uh, and other businesses are making provision for their clients, customers, um, renters uh, to try to help them as well. And so, you know, we're all going to have to be uh, proactive in seeking help until we get through this. Um, but uh, there is provision in the federal legislation and there is um, provision at the state and local level to protect people. The last thing we need right now are more homeless. Thank you. Thank you. Let's welcome Norman Hobson with another question. Thank you again, Congressman, for your time. I'm, I'm, I'll, I'm drinking from my, uh, my Stanford mug. I hope that's OK. <laughs> that's uh, if, one of you, <laughs> if one of you sends me a Trojan mug, I'm happy to drink from that in the next, uh, next town hall. We'll forgive you for now. <laughs> um, I'm the current outgoing um, president of TIN. I'm a SAG rep and a current doctorate student at USC Roswell School. My question is from Kelly. Kelly's a marketing director. How will the stimulus checks be distributed if a person has filed taxes with direct deposit in 2018, but has not yet filed taxes in 2019? Um, if you filed taxes last year, then you should be covered in the sense that um, you should have no problem getting the check. And if you did it electronically and would get normally your refund, if you qualify for a refund electronically, you'll actually get your check quicker than anybody else. Uh, that is people that um, file it the old fashioned way with paper and end up getting a check in the mail. Those will take longer to arrive than people who file electronically. 
Um, yeah, so if you are planning to file your returns now and there's been a postponement of the date by which you need to file your returns, but if you um, filed old, the old fashioned way with paper last year, but you file now electronically, then I would presume that you might be able to get your check quicker because they'll use that electronic deposit to deposit your stimulus check as well. But you should be good in any event if you filed taxes last year uh, and you're taking advantage of the um, delay and when you need to file for this year, you should be fine. You should get your stimulus check. Thank you. Presenting next is Heather Humpelman. Thank you so much for joining us today. I am the Director of Membership for 10 and own a production company that specializes in communications work. This question is from Nick, an actor. Many people working in entertainment, especially creatives, have a second job or side gigs. How will having income from multiple sources, say 1099s and W-2s, affect them receiving aid? Well, I think the way that it will affect them is, uh, I guess, twofold. Um, first, um, it will be part of what you'll show the uh, California Unemployment Office, the EDD, uh, about your income uh, for last year, which will determine the benefit you get in unemployment uh, this year as a result of the stimulus package. Uh, so those, whatever employment, whoever you work for, whatever your sources of income were, uh, I presume will be aggregated for the purpose of determining how much you'll get in unemployment uh, as a result of the legislation that we passed. Um, and so uh, I think that's the mechanism. Um, and uh, presumably if uh, you filed your return uh, and all of those 1099s went into your return from the last year, it should be fairly simple and straightforward because uh, your income will be known. Uh, and it won't, it won't be necessary for you to do a whole lot of chasing down paperwork, uh, which is probably nearly impossible these days. So uh, it should be, uh, you know, I would hope, uh, quite matter of fact, um, your income based uh, on your work last year, uh, and all of that would be taken into consideration in calculating your benefit uh, through unemployment compensation. Thank you. Our next presenter is Aaron Marlowe. Hi, uh, my name is Aaron Marlowe. I'm an actor and a writer. Uh, my question is from JP, a voice actor. As a result of Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017, many of us in entertainment had to form loan out corporations or lose the ability to write off our business expenses. Now, incorporated entertainment professionals are unable to claim unemployment like we could as individuals. Does the CARES bill accommodate incorporated individuals who are out of work? And if not, is there the possibility of including such relief in future bills? Um, you know, the, the answer is you should be covered, uh, but you may be covered by the small business provisions rather than the unemployment compensation provisions. Uh, so you'll, uh, you know, you may want to start out uh, with the SBA. Um, and that may be, frankly, a better vehicle for you anyway, uh, if the payroll that you would be earning through the small business uh, would be more than you would get in unemployment compensation. So you may want to start out with the SBA, see if you qualify for those forgivable loans to make payroll. I think you're allowed to make your own payroll, as long as your own payroll isn't in excess, I think, of 100,000. Um, and so that may be the place to start. Uh, if, for example, for some reason, they say, no, you need to go the unemployment compensation route, um, then you should be covered through unemployment compensation uh, I would hope that you're not going to fall between uh, the cracks between the two. You shouldn't. If that should be the case, uh, I would definitely want to know uh, both to see whether uh, we can weigh in with either the unemployment office or the SBA to make sure that one or the other is, is actually interpreting the law correctly. Uh, and as a last resort, if necessary, to make this part of any subsequent um, uh, package that we take up to make sure that people that fall between those two um, provisions nonetheless are provided for. Great, thank you very much. Well, I gotta say, I think we got some pretty great questions from our members, we really appreciate it. We are going to uh, get down to our final question now because a lot of the problems our members are facing today, to be frank, are still going to be there after this pandemic has passed. Most people don't realize that filmmakers and other entertainment freelancers 
are essentially entrepreneurs and face the same barriers as many trying to start any kind of small business. How can 10 USC and our wider community of industry professionals work with your office and Congress to ensure that the issues brought forward by this current crisis aren't forgotten when it comes to the systemic issues that make hundreds of thousands of entertainment professionals financially insecure, both in times of crisis and when the economy is booming? Well, it's a great question. And, you know, I think what you're doing right now uh, in reaching out this way and having this dialogue is going to be enormously important to continue, uh, even when we get through this uh, crisis. Uh, coronavirus is going to be with us for a while. Um, you know, we will face the worst of it, I imagine, over the next month to two months. And then we'll be on the other side of this curve. And obviously what we're doing now to try to flatten that curve um, will, I hope, avoid the worst uh, outcomes uh, by um, staving off uh, a real crisis within our healthcare system. But uh, I think we can expect that much like after the main fire is put out, there are going to be uh, hot spots that, that need to be uh, put out over time as different communities in the country are affected at different times. And we'll see probably this virus come back um, in the fall. Uh, and until we have a vaccine, it won't be completely gone. So I think along the way, this will be an iterative process and we may need to un extend unemployment compensation further. We may need to uh, address remedies for those that uh, fall between the quack cracks of the support we're already providing. But then when this is truly behind us, uh, we're gonna need to continue to focus on these, these issues. I mean, the unemployment compensation system should cover you. It shouldn't be just for when there's a pandemic. So we we'll wanna work together with you We'll need your voice um, to weigh in uh, with Washington and Sacramento to make sure that we make systemic changes to unemployment compensation, to our safety net in general, uh, to our healthcare system so that everyone has access to healthcare. Uh, you know, before all this really um, intensified, I was at the Munich National Security Conference, and of course, coronavirus was beginning to be a very uh, heated topic. This was in early February. And uh, in discussing uh, um, some of these challenges, I remember in particular discussing this with uh, the Norwegian, uh, I believe it's the prime minister or the president. Um, and she was talking about how um, their safety net, net, which is really very impressive, uh, where their healthcare is provided, their college education is provided, it actually gives entrepreneurs, like people in the industry, the confidence to try new things, to be daring uh, from a business point of view, to be creative from a business point of view, um, and not be too worried about failing because there's a net to catch them if they fail. So it gives them the greater ability to innovate, which I think is a really important point. Um, and we should look for the same um, protection for those innovators uh, in our economy as well. So I would say we're gonna to need to continue, intensify even uh, our dialogue and discussion between elected officials and the industry uh, to try to make sure that we uh, not only get through this crisis, but we uh, put in place a better um, and more comprehensive system uh, in the future. Um, the creative industries right now are um, saving us from madness uh, as we're all cooped up uh, in our homes, um, the, uh, even if there is a fight over the remote control. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'm so proud to represent so many talented people in the industry. It's been uh, just a great source of uh, satisfaction uh, and enjoyment for me uh, to meet and work with so many uh, brilliant, creative people. Uh, so that work has to go on. I look forward to it. Uh, finally, I just want to say by way of encouragement, because uh, I know how distressing these times can be. I was talking to one of my staff today who lives in Washington, D.C., works in my Capitol office, and she was saying that the, the D.C. police were driving down her street, um, blaring over the loudspeakers, stay inside, stay in your homes, avoid illness or, or death. Um, and she said it was like a scene out of an apocalyptic movie. Um, so I, I understand we all do what a worrying time this is, 
uh, going to the grocery store and seeing people wearing masks. Uh, and th thank goodness our grocery workers uh, and our healthcare workers are still on the job. But we're going to get through this. Um, we've been through more difficult things in the nation's history. This too shall pass. We will get through it. Um, unlike many other challenges uh, we've had, this one is really calling on all of us right now to do our part in a very disciplined way, um, to follow the advice of the health experts, not to take unnecessary risks, uh, to shelter uh, in place, and we'll get through this. Uh, and so um, that work will come back, those jobs will come back. Uh, there's gonna be a real appetite, uh, not only for the streaming content that you're producing, but I think when this is all over, there's going to be a hunger for communal gathering again, to once again populate the movie theaters, which I know are also hard hit by this. And those SBA provisions, by the way, should be good for a lot of the movie theaters uh, that are have had to close their doors. So uh, I look forward to the time when I can be uh, back in the movie theater enjoying your great work. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, uh, stay healthy, stay safe, and thanks for giving us so much great content to listen to and to watch. Well, Congressman Adam Schiff, thank you again to you and your staff. Uh, we also want to thank the 10 members who submitted questions, our presenters, and the USC Alumni Association for making this virtual town hall possible. And to all our members, let us know how 10 can continue to provide information and opportunities to connect at this uncertain time. Whatever shape our industry takes in the wake of what's happening now, We'll navigate it together. I've been Jimmy Kelly. Thanks for watching and fight on.